Hi there, everybody. My name is Richard McMahon. And if you want to become a police officer, then you have come to the right place. This training course, which I've spent many months creating, is going to give you expert coaching, tuition and tips for successfully passing the UK police officer selection process. As you only know too well, the selection process is tough and it is highly competitive. And I'm going to give you some great tips for making sure you come at the high percentage of people who pass the process itself. So I've called this How to Become a UK Police Officer online training course. My name is Richard McMahon and I am one of the longest serving business owners of police recruitment products, services and training courses. Essentially, I've been doing this for over 13 years now and I have helped literally hundreds of people pass the tough selection process. So make sure you take notes, you listen to the hints and tips that I'll provide you with. My advice is to watch the whole video from beginning to end and then go back to it and watch it again and take even more notes and then look to accelerate your learning even further and I'll explain how to do that towards the end of the presentation. If you are watching this online on YouTube, please make sure you click the like button. I would very much appreciate that and also subscribe to the channel because I create lots of new videos regularly and they will get straight into your inbox if you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Okay, so I genuinely want you to succeed. The way to do that is to take notes, as I've mentioned, and listen carefully to all of the tips I'm gonna give you throughout this presentation. And there are scores and scores of tips that are gonna really help you. Now, the one key difference between those people who pass the police selection process and those who fail is competencies. So what do I mean by competencies? The competencies are basically the blueprint for the role of a police officer, okay? And these competencies are made up of different key activities and different phrases, um, and they're basically the person specification and the role for a police officer. So it makes sense that you need to learn and understand what the competencies are, and then be able to demonstrate them effectively during every stage of the process. So during this presentation, I'm going to help you significantly increase your chances of passing by using the following formula. And I want you to write this down and focus on this during your preparation. K plus A equals pass. OK, so K is keywords plus A for actions equals a pass. So you're going to use keywords and phrases from the core competencies. And then you're going to put those into actions during the interview and the role play scenarios, which I'm going to talk about throughout this presentation. And that will significantly increase your chances of passing and putting you in the top percentage of people who get through the actual selection process. So at every stage of the selection process, the assessors, the people who are assessing you, are looking to see whether or not you meet the competencies required to become a competent police officer. So if you put yourself in the shoes of the assessors, they're going to be looking for um, key activities, key behaviours, things you say, things you do and things you write down that are relevant to the competencies. Therefore, you have to learn and you have to understand them. It makes perfect sense. So let's get straight into some valuable tips that will really matter to your success. Make sure you write these down as I go along and revisit them once you've watched the entire video. The first one, learn the competencies. Get yourself a copy of them and learn them. Now, the police officer core competencies form the fundamental requirements of the role of a police officer. They identify how you should perform and they are key to the role of a police officer. Read them carefully and make sure you understand them because they are crucial to your success. And I can confidently say that if you don't learn these and be able to demonstrate them, then you will not succeed. OK, so they are fundamental to your success. Throughout the selection process, you should concentrate on the core competencies, constantly trying to demonstrate them at every stage. And when completing the application form, your answers should be based around the competencies. The same rule applies to the written tests, the interview, and also the role play stroke interactive exercises. The most effective way to achieve this is to use keywords and phrases in your responses to the application form and the interview questions. So what do I mean by this? I'll come on to that in a second, but let me quickly come on to a valuable tip I wanna give you, and it's called download and highlight. So download a copy of the core competencies and then highlight key words and phrases and then learn them and re repeat them during the selection process. So at the start of your preparation, download the competencies and highlight keywords and phrases from each and every one. So here's a sample core competency. It's called openness to change. 
And what this means is the police service and virtually every public service, public sector organization wants its employees to be open to change. So the organization changes all the time. So it doesn't want people who are, to want for a better term, stuck in the mud, who are dinosaurs. They want people who are open to change. So this means you need to be positive about change. You need to adapt rapidly to different ways of working and put effort into making them work. They want people who are flexible and open to alternative approaches to solving problems. They want you to find better, more cost-effective ways of doing things and make suggestions for change. They want you to take an innovative and creative approach to solving problems. So that's a sample core competency called Open to Change. So you will download this, you will read it, you will understand it. And then you will highlight keywords and phrases that you would use during the application form, during the role plays, during the interviews. And you only have to do this once, download them, highlight them, and then repeat them during every single stage. And your chances of success will literally skyrocket. So you can see there that I've picked out ones which I think are relevant. You adapt rapidly to situations. You are flexible. You look for more cost-effective ways of doing things. You take an innovative approach and you are creative as well. So if we look at that and then below the highlighted areas, you can see there that I've provided you with some sample responses. So you might say, I adapted rapidly or quickly to the situation by, and then you'd explain what you did. Throughout the task, I was flexible in my, my approach because I did X, Y, and Z. The solution I came up for my manager was highly cost-effective and saved the company X amount of pounds. I took an innovative approach to the situation that was presented to me by doing X, Y, and Z. So you can see that I am using keywords and phrases from the competencies in my responses. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is one of the best ways to prepare fully for the selection process because the assessor who will be standing there or sitting there looking at you and marking you will be able to go, yep, you've mentioned about those keywords and phrases. You are demonstrating that you match all of the core competencies. Tip number three, another really important one, equality and diversity. A lot of people watching this will think, I do not know what that means or what it is. My advice is to be able to understand it and explain what it is during the selection process. Equality and diversity is basically believe in the need to treat everybody fairly and with respect. OK, you have to genuinely believe in equality and diversity. And I do. I think it's very important in any kind of public sector organisation, especially such as the police service or the fire service, that equality and diversity is at the top. Have examples of when you have gone out of your way to promote equality and diversity within an organisation. And I'll explain later on at the end of this presentation, when I talk about accelerating your learning, how to find out more about this and what it means. Be able to tell the recruitment staff why equality and diversity are so important in the police service. So let me give you some pointers. And like I said earlier, watch this video from beginning to end and then come back and revisit these important parts. So this is my explanation of what I mean by equality and diversity. And you can use this, but make sure you believe in it. The police service is there to serve the public. Therefore, it is essential that the service represents the community in which it serves. Now, society, as we all know, is extremely diverse in nature. Therefore, if the police are to be capable of delivering a very high standard of service, they must be diverse in nature too. Every police officer has a duty to treat people both within the police service and within the community with utmost respect at all times. Police officers are role models for the organisation they are employed by, and they must operate by the police service's code of conduct at all times and expect it from their colleagues and peers. Tip three, equality and diversity, very important. Tip number four, this is one area where a lot of people fail. You will be amazed at how many people fail through poor spelling, grammar and punctuation. Believe it or not, many people fail this part, because of poor grammar, spelling and punctuation. If you are weak in this area, don't worry about it, but take steps to improve. There are many tools online that help you to train and improve with regards to spelling, grammar and punctuation. Now you're gonna be assessed against your ability to communicate effectively in both verbal and written format. So make sure you don't fall down on this area because you could be giving great responses to the core competency application form questions, but your spelling and grammar is poor, you will fail. OK, so make sure you work on this. And also, don't forget, guys, is that most of us now, we, we type a lot. I mean, I can't remember the last time I used a pen and paper. I use my phone all the time. And during the assessment centre, you're going to have to write reports. 
using pen and paper. So therefore, make sure you practice. Because if I said to you now, go away and write a four page essay on equality and diversity, I guarantee after the first page, your hand will be hurting. OK, because you're not used to using a pen and paper. So make sure you do practice and work on and check your spelling, grammar and punctuation. Evidence. Tip number five. What do I mean by this? Well, at every stage of the police recruitment selection process, provide evidence of where you meet the core competencies. For example, don't just say, I am a fantastic team worker and I understand the importance of teamwork when working as a police officer, because that response is not going to get you many marks. However, if you were to say, I am a fantastic team worker and I understand the importance of teamwork when working as a police officer. For example, whilst at work one day, my manager asked for volunteers to carry out a particular urgent task. And then you go in and explain what the situation was, what task had to be done, what action you took and action other people took, and then explain the result following yours and others actions. Then you will gain higher marks because you are providing evidence of where you've actually done something before. That is the difference between a pass or a fail, providing evidence, specific situations. Don't talk in generic terms of what you would do in a situation, but provide specific evidence. Very important. And on that basis, to help you construct your application form responses and your answers to the interview questions, use the STAR technique. STAR, S, explain what the situation was and who was involved. Explain what task had to be carried out. Who took what action? What did you do? What did others do? And how did they do it? And then be positive about the result. What was the end result following your actions? The end result should always be positive. You managed to solve the situation or achieve the task within a, a, a difficult time frame or a certain amount of pressure that was being applied. So use a STAR method. And I'll talk more about this as we go through the presentation. Tip number seven, mock practice. What do I mean by this? Now, the only way you will really get to prepare fully is to carry out mock interviews and mock role plays before you go to the assessment center. So make sure you practice. OK, go through them. Don't let the first time you try a role play scenario be at the assessment center. You should have gone through it loads and loads of times. And I'll explain how to do this during the presentation. So stick around and watch and listen to the rest of it. OK, now let's get into the nitty gritty and start looking at the application form the role plays and also the police officer interviews. First part, application form. Let me give you some golden tips, guys. Make sure you read the whole of the application form at least twice before preparing your responses, including the guidance notes. Read and understand the person specification and the police officer core competencies. And before you put down your responses to the questions, write them out, practice them, use the STAR method. And don't forget keywords plus actions equals a pass. So make sure you take keywords and phrases from the core competencies and incorporate them into your responses. Tailor your answers around the core competencies and include any keywords and phrases that are relevant. And make sure you base your answers on actual events that you've experienced either in work or your personal life. Generic won't get you anything. Specific responses will get you higher marks. Make sure you use examples from work, social, domestic or educational life to answer the questions. And in these examples, they are looking for evidence of specific behaviours which researchers show to be essential to police work. Be specific. They want to know what you said or did on a given occasion to deal with a situation. It's therefore important that the examples you provide are your own experiences and as detailed as possible. Now, a golden tip. Use examples that you found difficult or challenging to deal with. These answers tend to achieve better marks. So if there was a time constraint or an additional external pressure that meant that you had to do something in a certain amount of time or there was a, a challenge, a bigger challenge involved, they tend to achieve higher marks. Let's have a look at a sample question on the application form and I'll give you a response to it. It is essential that police officers are capable of showing respect for other people regardless of their background. Please describe a situation when you've challenged someone's behaviour that was bullying, discriminatory or insensitive. You will be assessed on how positively you acted during the situation and also on how well you understood what had occurred. And then the question will be split up into four parts. You will have to provide four responses. Part one, describe the situation and also tell us about the other person or people who were involved. Here's my response. Whilst working as a salesperson from my previous employer, 
I was serving a lady who was from an ethnic background. I was helping her to choose a gift for her son's seventh birthday when a group of four youths entered the shop and began looking around at the goods we had for sale. Now, for some strange reason, they began to make racist jokes and comments to the lady. I was offended by the comments and I was concerned for the lady to whom these comments were directed. Any form of bullying and harassment is not welcome in any situation and I was determined to stop it immediately and protect the lady from any more harm. So let me give you some tips. Try to answer this type of question focusing on the positive action that you took, identifying that you understood the situation. And in that sample response, when you refer back to it later on, after you've watched all of the presentation and you take notes, you'll see that I focused on, I was being positive. I took positive action straight away and I identified and understood the situation. Now, don't forget to include keywords and phrases in your response that are relevant to the competencies that are being assessed. Part two, because remember, I mentioned there are four parts to the question. What did you say and what did you do? My response. The lady was clearly upset by their actions and I too found them both offensive and insensitive. I decided to take immediate action and stood between the lady and the youth to try to protect her from any more verbal abuse or comments. I told them in a calm yet assertive manner that their comments were not welcome and would not be tolerated. I then called over my manager for assistance and asked him to call the police before asking the four youths to leave the shop. I wanted to defuse the situation as soon as possible, being constantly aware of the lady's feelings, and I was confident that the shop's CCTV cameras would have picked up the four offending youths and that the police would be able to deal with the situation. Now you will then be asked to answer two further parts to this question. Part three, why do you think the other people behaved as they did? And what would have been the consequences if you had not acted as you did? So in order for me to explain and give you sample responses to those questions, I'm going to explain towards the end of this presentation where to get access to these. So make sure you stick around. Role plays. Now, the role plays form part of the police officer assessment center. Now, in my opinion, they are one of the hardest parts of the selection process, but they are also your opportunity to shine and demonstrate, you know, and understand the core competencies. Make sure you practice the role plays with someone who knows what the assessors are looking for. Ideally, someone who has been an assessor in the past or someone who's been through the process. So more on this soon. And when I say someone who's been um, an assessor, some, someone who's been recently, someone who knows the process, not someone who's been through it 20 odd years ago, someone who is recent. OK, and I explain more about that in a very short period of time. Now, once again, during the role play scenarios, you will need to demonstrate you have the right qualities and competencies to pass. Just to recap what I said at the beginning, keywords plus actions equals a pass. How you deal with the situation and what you say in your actions are very important. So the role plays during the police officer assessment center, you will have to deal with four interactive exercises or role plays as they are otherwise called, whilst assuming the role of a customer services officer. So you're going to be a customer services officer, a, a fictitious um, retail centre. The type of situation that you'll be confronted with varies greatly. However, examples of the types of exercises that have been used in the past include a customer of the centre wants to discuss an incident that happened at the centre with you. A shop owner in the centre wants to discuss an incident at their shop an employee within the centre has been asked to attend a meeting and a school teacher who is visiting the centre would like to discuss an issue with you regarding his or her pupils. So there are two parts to the role play assessment. The first one is the preparation phase, five minutes long. And the second one is the activity phase, again, five minutes long. And you have to do four of these different role play scenarios. So you go through this four times. In my experience, and talking to a lot of people who've been through this process, they find them the most daunting. But in my view, even though they are the hardest, this is something you can practice before you go along. And I'll explain how to do that in a little while. So the preparation phase, this is a five minute phase during which you'll be provided with the scenario itself. And that will either be on a card or a sheet of paper. Now you may also be provided with additional documentation that is relevant to the scenario that you'll be required to deal with. You'll then be taken to a desk or a separate room where you'll have just five minutes in which to prepare for the activity phase. Now, during the preparation phase, you will be allowed to take notes and then use them during the activity phase. But at the end of the activity phase, you'll normally be required to hand in your notes to the assessor. You'll not be permitted to take any writing utensils 
into the activity phase. Now, the big, really important tip is to learn the welcome pack before you go to the assessment center. This will make your job much easier at the role plays. If you learn the welcome pack, which consists of things like an equality and policy statement, um, a code of conduct, and what your responsibilities are, if you learn all of these before you go to the preparation phase or the role play scenarios, it will make your job much easier. Because you will see the scenario and then immediately, if you know the welcome pack inside out, you'll understand what you need to do and what the rules and procedures are. Because also within the welcome pack, it talks about how many security guards are on duty at any one time. It talks about the location of the police station within the centre. And it also talks about a first aid base. It will also talk about um, CCTV footage and whether or not you can use a tannoy system. So if you know all of these before you go, your five minutes during the preparation phase can be used as to how you're going to deal with a situation instead of reading the welcome pack. So make sure you learn it before you go along. Now, by studying and learning the welcome pack, you will receive as part of the pre-assessment center documentation. You'll be able to predict the types of scenario you may be presented with during the activity phase. So you then go into the role play room where one role play person will be there in front of you. And there will also be at least one assessor marking you during the five minute stage. Don't think to yourself that five minutes is long. It's not. It will fly by. You have to resolve this situation in five minutes and you can see why now it's very important to not just learn the welcome back but to practice the role play scenarios before you go so my advice is to deal with the role play actor in a sensitive and supportive manner don't be aggressive towards them if they become aggressive towards you never meet fire with fire don't do it don't get con confrontational remain calm you know use open body language be calm and supportive Never raise your voice or be aggressive towards a role play actor. Have respect for, for them, for their views and their feelings, even if you disagree with them. See issues from other people's points of view. Ask relevant questions to clarify the situation. So if the role play assessor says this has happened, repeat it back to them. Say, can I just clarify that, sir or madam? Can, you, can I just clarify that this is the situation? You will get marks for doing that. Listen to their needs and interests. So when they're talking to you, look as though you're listening. Nod your head. OK, make, you know, noises to demonstrate that you're listening like, aha, OK, I understand. Respect confidentiality where appropriate. Present an appropriate image. You're a role model. You're the customer service officer. Therefore, you have to be as a role model, as a police officer would be. Sort out the customer's problems as soon as possible. You've got five minutes. It's not long. Make reference to any supporting documentation, policies or procedures. So if they mention to you, that there is um, like a child's gone missing at the centre. You can say, well, we have CCTV footage. I will also inform the police station because you know one is on site. Confirm that the customer is happy with your solution. So when you come up with a solution to the role play, say to the customer or the person you're the role play actor you're dealing with, can I just confirm that you're happy with my proposed solution? You will gain marks for doing that. Now also keep them updated as to any progress that you're going to make. So if the child's gone missing, for example, then you can say, I will keep you update, updated at every stage of the process while we look for the child. OK, so that will gain you marks. And there's loads more tips that I'm going to give you. I'll explain where to get more and more as I go through the presentation. We've got loads of tips that we're going to help you pass the role play scenarios. Let me just take a look at a few of them. These are just sample role play scenarios that you could come up against. You are the customer services officer at a fictitious retail centre. A member of your staff approaches you and tells you that she's been bullied by another member of staff. The woman is clearly upset by the situation and she wants you to take action. You're the customer services officer. A school teacher has lost a pupil in the shopping centre and he wants to discuss the matter with you. He's very annoyed that it took him so long to find your office. He states that there were no security staff around and his pupil has now been missing for 15 minutes. So, you know, you could see you're going to go into a hotbed of activity there in the role play scenario. You have to get a grip of it and sort it out within five minutes and tell them what you're going to do. You are the customer services officer. A member of the public wants to complain as his mother, who is a disabled badge owner, cannot park at the centre as people without disabled badges are parking in the allocated spots. And there is information within the welcome pack that will help you to deal with that situation. So that's why you've got to learn it before you go along to the assessment centre. Let's take a look at a couple more. One of the centre shop managers wants to see you about a gang of yous who are standing outside his shop behaving in an antisocial manner. They're swearing and obstructing customers from entering his shop. 
He's very annoyed at the situation. He's losing money because potential customers are not allowed to shop in comfort without feeling threatened. Another one, a member of staff for whom you're responsible has been underperforming whilst at work. She's constantly late for work and there are rumours around that she has problems at home. You've called her into your office to discuss the situation with her. So you have to be sensitive to her situation. Yes, she is underperforming and you'll have to deal with that, but you have to support her. Ask questions to find out what the problems are at home and how you can help her. Now, I've got many more sample role play scenarios to give you that I want you to practice and I'll explain very soon how to get a copy of these. Let's have a look at the assessment centre interview. Now, there are two types of interview. There's the assessment centre one, which everyone goes through. And then there's a final interview, which some police forces have implemented and started using as part of the process. So the police will assess you on five different competencies during the assessment centre interview. Oral communication, how you come across and what you say and what you do, will be assessed throughout the interview and you will be asked one question in relation to the following other four competencies. Now these are correct at the time of me creating this presentation, but they can change. It doesn't matter if they do change, but just be prepared that they can vary from time to time. At the moment it's service delivery, serving the public, professionalism, and also working with others. So there's five competencies, oral communication all the time, service delivery, serving the public, professionalism, working with others. Let's take a look at a sample competency-based interview question for professionalism. This is the core competency of professionalism. Provide an example of where you've challenged someone's behavior that was either discriminatory or inappropriate. What did you do and what did you say? So tips for constructing your response. Read carefully the core competency that relates to respect for race and diversity before constructing your response. When challenging this type of behavior, make sure you remain calm at all times and never become aggressive or confrontational. Consider structuring your response using STAR. I'll come on to that again in a second. Another sample question. Tell me about a time when you changed how you did something in response to feedback from someone else. Some more tips. What did you need to develop? What feedback did you receive and from whom? What steps did you take to improve yourself or someone else? It's good to volunteer to improve. OK, so someone might give you feedback, say a boss or a line manager during an appraisal, and then you volunteer to go on a training course to improve. That will get you more marks. What did you specifically say or do? What was the result? And again, consider structuring your response using STAR. So let's just recap. STAR. Situation. What was the situation and who was involved? What task had to be carried out? What action? What did you do? What did others do? And what was the result? Make sure the result is positive. And I would use this process, situation, task, action, result, for every single application form response and assessment center interview response too. Okay, here's my response to the question. Tell me about a time when you changed how you did something in response to feedback from someone else. So during my last appraisal, my line manager identified that I needed to improve in a specific area. I basically work as a call handler for a large independent communications company. And part of my role involves answering a specific number of calls per hour. If I do not reach the target, then this does not allow the company to meet its standards. I found that I was falling behind on the number of calls answered, and this was identified during the appraisal. I needed to develop my skills in the manner in which I handled the call. My line manager played back a number of recorded calls that I dealt with and it was apparent that I was taking too long speaking to the customer about issues that were irrelevant to the call itself. Because I'm a conscientious and caring person, I found myself asking the customer how they were and what kind of day they were having. Despite the customers being more than pleased with the level of customer care, this approach was not helping the company and therefore I needed to change my approach. I immediately took on board the comments of my line manager and also took up the offer of development and call handling training. After the training, which took two weeks to complete, I was meeting my targets with ease. This in turn helped the company to reach its call handling targets. That uses situation, task, action, result. You would, of course, go into more detail when you're given that kind of response to the interview question and also be prepared for probing questions from the interviewer. So don't forget situation, task, action, result. This will help you to structure your responses and achieve higher marks with regards to oral communication. So once you've passed the police officer assessment center interview, let's have a look at the police officer final interview. Now, some police services have started to introduce what is called the final interview. And the final interview is in addition to the assessment center competency based interview, and it will take on a different format. The interview usually takes place 
um, at the services, training centre or similar establishment. The purpose of the final interview is to allow the service to ask you questions that are outside of the competencies that have been assessed at the assessment centre. Now, in essence, it allows the service to find out more about you, your application, your motivations for wanting to become a police officer, and they want to know about that you know about the role of the service that you're applying for. They may also ask you questions that are based around what you might do in a given situation. Sample police officer final interview questions. What is it that has attracted you to this particular constabulary? They're trying to find out that you know lots about what's going on within the area um, and also what the police service are doing at that particular time. What can you tell us about the structure of the constabulary? You should go along to your local police station, find out about the structure, go on the website of the police force and find out who the key people are, who the, the chief constable is and you know who the other key players are within the organization what can you tell me about the geographical area of the police service you know what are the different areas and um, the different command areas of the police service can you tell me how this constabulary is doing in relation to crime reduction you can find out this information online look out for good news stories what the police is doing what initiatives they're carrying out right now with regards to crime reduction activities and how they're working with the local community what is neighborhood policing and how does this constabulary approach it what are the ambitions of the police service and who are our partners and stakeholders? So partners and stakeholders are like the ambulance service, the police service, social services, local CCTV camera companies, etc. There's loads of different stakeholders that I can give you all the details of. So we've covered a huge amount right now with regards to getting you on your way to passing the selection process. What's next for you? So what I want you to do is to head over to the website policecourseonline.co.uk where you can get access to a proper in-depth online training course that will teach you how to become a police officer in under 30 days. It only costs one pound to access this, okay, but we give you 30 days unlimited access for just one pound. So if we just quickly head to um, the website, so you can see there when you go along, it's policecourseonline.co.uk. You go along there, um, you can leverage our proven training to get the edge over other candidates and become a police officer. I'll go into loads more in-depth detail about what I've just covered. It's modular based training. You get unlimited access for that period of time. I'll go through the police officer application form in detail, provide up to date police officer interview coaching. I'll even give you sample tests so you can download testing documents, um, try the written reports, verbal numerical reasoning, police role play scenarios. I'll give you an example, that's me there, of me going for a particular scenario. OK, so you can use this on the go as well. What's great about our course is that you can use it on your mobile phone. So you can use it during your lunch hour and practice loads. You can have unlimited access to it um, during that period of time. So that's please course online. It's only one pound. You've got to take it up, guys. You've got to go with it. it. You know, it will massively increase your chances. Now, for those people who actually want to come along and spend a day with our ex police assessors, who know exactly what you're going to go for on the day, head over to policecourse.co.uk. Now, this is a one-day course. Um, it's run by a former member of the Metropolitan Police, okay, who knows what you're going to go through, um, you know, not long left as an assessor of the Met Police and knows exactly what you're going to go through. So if you head over, this is the other thing to do, because you might take up this £1 online course and also come on the police course. So this is policecourse.co.uk. It'll take you through to our page. This will give you all the details about the day that you're going to come along and spend with us. If you click book now there, it will give you the dates that are coming up and you can book on this one day training course where you get to spend time with the assessor, go for the application form, the role plays, the interviews with written tests. You get to spend a whole day. So my advice is to get yourself on this online course and then also supplement it with the day's training. Don't forget what I mentioned before about how it is important to try the role plays, have mock interviews before you go along today. Don't listen to anyone who tells you oh, you don't need to go along to a training course. It will really help you and enhance your skills. How can that be that you're asked to go along to a role play? You know, try a role play scenario out before you go and someone's saying don't do a role play before you go. Absolutely try out the role plays, okay? Get someone to put you under under pressure and be able to deal with it and also have a mock interview. Sit down in, in front of someone and practice responding to the questions. So that's policecourseonline.co.uk for the one pound course access, head over to that website right now or policecourse.co.uk so that you can get access to the full day's training. I want you to be successful, guys. I genuinely do. Leave nothing to chance. Go for it. I wish you all the very best. 
in your pursuit to becoming a police officer, don't forget to hit the like button below the video. I hope you've enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel. And also leave some comments below the video if you'd like me to do some more for you. And we'll engage and come back to you. If you have any questions about the selection process, just ask below the video. Thank you very much for watching and best of luck.